and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Lucian Fury. Bringing this deck back, it's been a long time since we've played this deck, and I just kind of felt it's it's you know it's time to bring it back. This is a deck that um, is aggr aggressively slanted, but it can um, can be really good in combat with a lot of different challengers and quick attack. It's just a, a deck that's pretty difficult to block. Um, and then you know you have like Fury of the North, which that's our that's the Fury part, not Battle Fury, unfortunately. But Fury of the North um, is just an awesome awesome pump spell whenever you're attacking. We have three Babbling Bjergs in here also that always draw our six drops because our six drops are both incredible. Sithri of the Bold and Sejuani, both incredible six mana cards. And so you, you really want to curve out and have these um, you know, at your top end on turn six to finish it out. And so Babbling Bjerg does a great job helping you get there. One small change that I'm making, I'm taking out the third Grizzled Ranger just to get a Harsh Winds in because there's a lot of other... Um, mid-range stompy decks you know if we're thinking about like these basilisk rider darius decks a harsh uh, like a, a well-timed harsh winds is something that can just be amazing in that matchup so i wanted i wanted to have a card like that in in the deck for that kind of matchup um but yeah it's good uh, good demacia good freljord stuff some good cards here so let's see how it does i think it could match up fairly well against the noxus decks um just in theory, and so that's why I wanted to kind of play it today. Let's see, see how it does. <laughs> yeah, the, from so long ago, the memories. Yeah. All right, and then then yeah, today we got um, Winter Ezreal playing something a little different. Y'all y'all know me though, not not a big fan of Ezreal decks. I just never do that well with them. But we're gonna try one with Freljord. Uh, it's got two Brahms, one Sejuani. Um, so, you know, we're going to try that. So for those of y'all that have been asking about Ezreal decks, we'll try that. And then we got a donation deck. It's a Twisted Fate control with Shadow Isles. Twisted Fate being the only champion in the deck. That with, like, Rekindler and a whole bunch of, like, removal spells. Tons and tons of card draw. It's, it's basically just built on card draw. Um, you know, you even pick a card, Glimpse Beyond, all sorts of card draw in there. And then and then by that, that time... Um, the gauntlet will probably be open. Uh, it's still not going to be open in the U.S. here for a couple more hours, and then we'll do a gauntlet deck after that. All right, get rid of these. Yeah, the music in the main screen is really, uh, really quiet. But I forgot this this board's music is actually really loud. Let me turn it down just a little bit. I forgot about that, how this the music on this board is extra loud. I don't know why that is, but that's just how it is. But I don't use this board very often. I kind of like using it for this deck, so I don't use it very often. They are full Demacia feel. Everyone's a god. That's a great card for our opponent. This is a great turn for them. Um, having a double sapling kill these. Oh, wow. Really? Huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this music is like, For Demacia! It's loud because it's the sound of justice. Yeah, that's basically what we got going on over here. Um, hmm. It's probably just better to play my four mana card this turn and play the two and three mana card together the next turn. I know I'm not getting the extra attack with the um, scout, but I don't want to just attack with the scout. They block with a one one. Right, like I'd rather I'd rather get this damage in. Monkey idol. Man, get that monkey idol off my back. <laughs> so I heard you like Sejuani. Alright, double phantom prankster gone. Thank you. 
Easy block. Easy block. So put me down to 10. You can probably go down to 10. Yeah, I need to start using more of these. These emojis more. These emotes. I got my challenger one. It's perfect for this deck. Um, let's see. Let's go with that one, I suppose. Don't really matter which one we do. There you are. Run them through. I demand satisfaction. Burn away the shadows. Ride onward. No, do I want to attack with the 3-4? I mean, attacking with the 3-4, all it does is they just block with the sapling. I honestly don't know if it's actually worth it to attack with the 3-4. Um, I guess we'll attack with the 3-4. I guess. Yeah, I, I was honestly thinking about not attacking with a 3-4. The, the thing is, is it's not that bad to have things die because of Lucian's level up, but still... I mean, yeah, it just, it just lets them do this. I mean, if I I guess if I didn't attack, they would have taken one less damage. So they would have put it over the Sejuani. Alright, so all we gotta do is survive this attack. And then we can win on the next attack. But we gotta survive this one. Um, and that is easier said than done. Mm. I wish I could play Babbling Bjerg and not... I guess I'm going to do it. Uh, I wish I could play it and still have Fury of the North available. But my life isn't that great. Alright, uh, you can block there, you can block there, you can block there, you can block there, you can block there. I take two. Even if something happens and Sejuani dies, it's okay, we got all these other Sejuanis. <laughs> Epic moment, music getting crazy. Is the music still too loud? Should I turn it down just a tad bit more? I can certainly turn it down just a tad bit more, if y'all prefer. If y'all... Um. <laughs> you love the music? Yeah, my, my opponent my opponent conceded there because the music was too loud. They had to get out of get out. Absolutely. Alright, so what's the mulligan strat? So yeah, the mulligan strat. Alright, I'll do just a little bit. I feel like the dialogue volume is a little loud too. Okay. Um, the Mulligan strat is find war chefs. That's a good one. And uh, basically, with this deck, you want Fleet Feather Tracker, War Chefs, Lucian. Those are the most important cards. Everything four plus mana, you Mulligan. Um, you maybe keep one three mana card. Don't keep two three mana cards. Um, I could just keep both of these. I actually kind of like all of these. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep these. Protector. Protector is good to keep. Also, like basically, always keep the one and two mana cards for the most part. Um, single combat can you can mulligan. I mulligan single combat a lot. This is an aggro matchup where like having single combat against Callista and Elise is important, and so I'm keeping it. Um, yeah, every four plus mana card you mulligan, you keep like one three mana card, 
and look for look for the one and two mana cards. And that's basically every kind of aggro deck. Like that's that's kind of your your strategy with every aggro deck. Tbh, that isn't. Um... Is it anything new here? Definitely super glad they didn't have uh, Ravenous Butcher because that would make this thing a three three, that a four three, and a three two, and that would have been so much pressure attacking on turn two 10 power on turn two that would have been pretty crazy so i want to pair protector with single combat together if possible against Heimer, would you keep single combat no Probably gonna have to use single combat here on the 3 3 to kill Callista. And yeah, I assume they were gonna just challenge the, the 3 power thing either way. I just played the one that costs more mana, basically. So we take 7. But we get to keep our two warships. Their units are larger than ours. That's a good draw. That's a good draw. No. Um, yeah, I basically kind of just used my mana better by, by playing that other thing. That's, that's basically what I was doing there, is I was using... Using my mana more. Oh dang, that's not a good card for me to see. I do not know why that bot like that's a waste of a spider link. They should not be blocking that. They just saved two life. Like they they gotta have like they're good. Spiderling's got to have more use than two life, right? Gotta, gotta have more use than two life. All right, Sejuani's a good draw. That was like the the point of me playing the babbling beer because I wanted to draw the Sejuani. We got all our six mana cards. To fear. But fear itself. You own what you take. Honestly, that should probably be going at the 3 3, not the 4 3, because I'd rather I'd rather have the, my 3 2 trade with their 4 3 than trade with their 3 3. So I should probably go after the 3 3. Where are you? A pretty present you make. <laughs> But yeah, I wanted to wanted to slow them down with their attack, so I want to play Sejuani there, slow them down. Alright, so we need to go this first, and then this for the Neverglade Collector. And then uh, we can just do the rest of these. Alright, so that's so this one's gonna be a 3-2. So do I want to challenge Elise or a 4-3? Um, probably a 4-3. Alright, that looks good. Please, I have connections! 
GG's. People forgot about Cythria. Cythria is still good. Still good. Alright, Lucian Fury 2 and 0. Oh. I wasn't too worried about Grasp the Undying in that kind of deck. Not too worried about that card. I don't think they play, like, they maybe have one copy. I could see keeping Babbling Bjerg here against Vimer with it being the card draw. As it just said, you always mulligan the four mana cards. I could see keeping this. With it just drawing one of the six drops. Being that card advantage. I'll, I'll keep it. We'll see how it goes. I wouldn't keep it if I was mulliganing all three other cards. But we already had we already had a turn two play. And it's just really super likely that we would have a turn three play. Um, by the time turn three came around. Feel the sizzle! These are just gonna trade. I didn't want to. I didn't want to attack like the turn two because I wanted to see if we would draw a challenger like a Laurent Protege, for example, that we'd be able to take care of that. But we didn't, and so they were just gonna be trading. Not a problem when you're by my side. But obviously, it's good to have these two in together. case scenario. I was thinking since they started with Get Excited that they didn't have a two mana removal spell. That's what I was thinking and that's why I played the Lucian. Um, that, that was my thought process was, was that then they don't have and so I thought it was going to be safe and so I thought I was going to be able to untap with it and have um, Fury of the North available afterwards to protect it. Well, that wasn't the case. Fury of the North is so good. The card is so good. I don't know if this is a waste of a single combat because like I don't have it for like Heimerdinger. Maybe. Maybe I should have just led with Protector instead of leading with Babbling Bjerg. I, I because like I because we drew um Because we drew the single combat, that's when that's when I led with Babbling Beer, but Show them what we're made of. 
They're still going to be able to block the Bright Seal Protector if they want and keep that alive. Everything Mystic Shot is bad against, Will of Ionia is good against. Except except for the two mana 2-3s. Two right, like your Elise, uh, War Chefs, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's for the most part, it's pretty true. I'll take that. Using They're using a, uh, you know, a Spirit's Refuge just to keep a 3-2 alive. I will take that. Alright, we're going to be going straight to combat, of course. I could I could harsh winds right away and then they wouldn't be able to block my like any of these fierce these three fearsomes. But the the thing is if, if they had Will of Ionia for Sejuani, I was only doing four plus four, which is eight, and they're at nine, so it wasn't lethal if they bounced Sejuani. If if it was lethal to bounce Sejuani, I would have cast Harsh Winds there. That was the math that I was kinda of doing in my in my head. Um, so yeah, since it wasn't wasn't lethal, didn't do it. Yeah, that's a good point. That that's probably what they had in hand left was deny. Yeah, they probably had a deny or two. I don't think that deny is is really playable in this metagame, to be honest. I, I'm not playing it in any Ionia deck. I, I think the metagame's too aggressive and there's too many burst speed spells. Um I guess in a deck like that you can have like one, maybe. I mean I guess you can maybe play one, but I don't like I've just been cutting it and like all the Ionia decks we played the last two days of of cut denies, and I was happy with that. You know, like the Twisted Sin deck and the uh, Katarina Shen, both of those. The beginning uh, before we played them, I cut deny and replaced it. No, last rank of day went amazing two days ago. Uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't streaming. You know, because uh, I had the problems with the stream, and I think it was my I think it was actually my internet upload speed messing up or something. I don't know what the problem was, but um, but yeah, we did great on that rank up day. Yesterday, we did great ranking up also, even though it, was, it wasn't like a, a true rank up day, but we got a whole bunch of 4-1s yesterday. Oh, the last time we played Lucian Fury, yeah, we were, we won about like 60%... All right, I guess no. Actually, no. We won fifty percent. We were we were five hundred. Yeah, that's right. Certainly hoping to be better than that. But. Shen, yeah, Shen's pretty awesome. I think that's a I think that's a good champion. Um, I think it's a lot better since they've buffed it. It has a good size at three one. Th wow, three five. Sorry, they just played a three one. Good size at three five. Uh, and yeah, I guess we have Fleet Feather Tracker trade. I think that's a worthwhile trade, our, our one mana card for their two mana card. We have other, uh, we have another challenger with Protégé. I think that's a worthwhile trade. It's, it's gonna be, you know, like, that thing's a 3-1. Difficult to really get rid of that. Alright, I'm gonna go Omen Hawk plus Lucian. So that there's a chill in the air. So that I can go um 
tracker plus protege next turn which i guess i could have just gone i could have just led with protege to be able to kill this and then i could have gone omen hawk plus tracker plus pro plus uh lucian this turn but as you can see it's it's always good to play um fleet feather tracker or sorry omen hawk it's always good to play omen hawk as early as possible as you can see with that Yeah, Shen's good. So yeah, Shen's good. Alright, so we're going to... Nope, you get over here, you get over here. Um, that puts that down to 4-1. And then they use Transfusion. Puts Crimson Disciple to 1 health. And my tracker is dead, and I think that's okay. Okay. I don't know why they did that on, on the Crimson Disciple and not on the 2-1 that was just going to die and not kill my thing. It'd make a lot of sense to do that on the 2-1, I would feel like, and then have the Crimson Disciple kill my tracker. They basically could have had my tracker die, and they decided not to. Uh, do I just want to take 6? I just want to take 6. Then use challenge right there. Deal 11. The problem with taking 6, I guess, is Darius. And Dar does Darius... Darius now has 6 health. Ugh. Why does that thing have that extra health? Okay, so maybe that was... Uh, maybe that wasn't good. Maybe that wasn't good. Let me show you what I can do. Strength above all. How dare you? Put me down to two. Can't go down to two. Close my eyes, make it fair. So I'm gonna have to go with this thing to fight and kill it. Why even try? be a time where it would be great to have a Fury of the North, but, I mean, okay. Okay, still alive. Not alive anymore. I, I think I, I think I did that wrong. I think, I think the taking the six was just the wrong play. Um, for how, especially for how that played out. I, I think I, I played that wrong. So if I, yeah, I think I messed that up. Basically, what I, I think I needed to do, um, and the better play would have been to play my 5-3 and just block the 6-4 with the 5-3. I take 3, I go to 12. Uh, then Darius isn't leveled up. I can't single combat and kill Darius still, and they could just play that Decimate pre-combat and level up Darius. Like, with Decimate, I think I just lose either way, because I, I don't have, like, with Darius Decimate, I, I think I lose that, but... Um, so, yeah, so basically if I, if I would have changed, I don't think I would have won that game still, but I think I did the wrong thing, if that makes sense. Um, I think I'm going to keep all these. Could get rid of Duelist, but I like Duelist. Yeah. 
yeah, they had they had a good hand. Like they had some powerful cards. Like that Darius being six health. That was the difference in that game, honestly. If Darius wasn't six health, if it was five health, I could have single combated it and not taken any damage from it and uh, most likely won that game, but it is six health. Double Omen Hawk is pretty enticing to do, but I want to get these Warchefs in play. Man, we have a lot of good things to play. Let's start with this one drop, and then we'll kind of see if we want to go Protector or Warchefs. I guess Warchefs, because I guess I can't attack. And they just have this Dark Water Scourge combo. Please don't have the combo. Darn. It's gonna make my life a lot worse. a lot worse. No, I haven't I haven't seen any announcement about labs. No, that's new to me. How you doing? I hadn't seen that. Alright, well I'm definitely playing duelist on the 2-2. Um, my plan was to play Bright Steel Protector also, but honestly, I kind of don't really need to play Bright Steel Protector also. I could get the Omen Hawk in play so it can pump up our next two things. Um, I guess Protector just attacks for more. We'll just go with the Protector. Next turn, I can go Bjerg plus Hawk. It's just weird having like this Omen Hawk in the opener for so long and not ever casting it. Dang, that Thresh is a great card to play right now. Dang, that Thresh is a good card to play right now. Let us settle this with grace and civility. Now do I just attack with everything and just let the Thresh? And basically level up. Like, this is going to take out that. <sighs> Man, that Thresh is good. It doesn't feel like the re attacking with the rest of these is worth it. No, it's not worth it. I hope Babbling Bure gets us Scythria. Not Sejuani. Sejuani wouldn't be bad either. Challenge Thresh. But I guess, it, I mean, we're going to get one of those. But Scythria would give all these fearsome, and so they wouldn't be able to block with these little 1-1s. One Take Sedwani. If I play, if I cast Omen Hawk, then I'm just going to be casting Sedwani over Omen Hawk. Um, and obliterating Omen Hawk. So 
So I guess I can probably just wait till I can just wait one turn and cast Omenhawk next turn and it doesn't get obliterated. Yeah. Three five challenger would have been nice. Things have really worked out well for my opponent this game. They're still at 20. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, things have really worked out well for them. I don't think I'm winning this game, honestly five cards over there. All this mana. Like, they're probably going to use removal on Babbling Bjerg. Thresh levels up. Thresh puts in Hecarim. I don't know. They just cast a Ruination. I don't know. Like, I'd... I'll be surprised if we win this game. Wow. Well, I was surprised that Thresh died there. At least it starts over. This would be a good Cythria game with the Fearsome. Thresh doesn't kill Babbling Beard. But I guess they want Babbling Beard to be a 4 1. Oh, no, 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 no. Great hand, geez. These wounds only make us stronger. Didn't have the fight in me that game. Um yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. It was I mean that game was one on turn three for them. The because I had I had a good start, you know, like with all those omen hawks and war chefs, like the really good start. But then whenever they pl they played the Dark Water Scourge and they had the combo with the Death Mark uh, to get the five five Life Steal in play turn three, that just you know like that just put brought me to a halt. I, this deck can't really handle a turn three five five, especially one with Life Steal, um, and then all of those huge heavy hitters late game. Yeah, like that's that's not what our deck's good against at all. So they got us that that turn three uh, combo, but. Yeah, so so three two the the Noxus match. That's one that I'd like to play some more. That's one you know, like we we lost a super close one. Um, that's that's the matchup that I'd like to play a lot more and really see um, how that goes um, over a, you know, like over the long haul. Um, that's gonna be a matchup where Fury of the North is pretty important. Didn't have that card, um, and yeah, like the Harsh Winds, you know didn't have that for the Darius like as we talked about that's why the harsh winds is kind of in the deck uh so yeah I, I would wonder I wonder how that matchup would go over the, the long haul of you know like a lot of games 
of our deck versus the Noxus deck. I, I think that we'd be a little ahead, but that the Noxus deck's very strong. I don't think it like would be like, you know, super favored. Um I don't really think there's anything, honestly, that's like super favored against that deck. Um but uh Yeah, that's Lucian Fury. Um but yeah, I think I think it would be fair. Probably be like sixty forty in our in our favor, but uh, as we saw there, especially you know, like those first few games, like this deck, this deck gets ahead. It's consistent. Um, you know, get, gets good attacks. Um, I like this deck. It's a nice, uh, a nice, uh, powerful deck. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Lucian Fury. Those of y'all watching this video later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.